Hi, I'm Leslie Eppinghouse. I'm one of the horticulturists at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. And today I want to talk to you about the best way to plant a new septic field. You're paying a whole lot of money and a whole team of people to clear a lot of your land. Um, my septic was a quarter acre and we had to remove 11 trees and it was very sad for me to do that. But what was created from there was a beautiful wildflower plot. So it's a great opportunity to kind of think about how you're gonna redesign that new space. The most important thing I think is that you want to make sure to have a good working contract with your septic installer in writing and you want to have a face-to-face -face conversation about what you plan to do with that septic field post them leaving the job. The main thing you want to do is if you want to take on planting your own space, then you want to have it in writing that you will take over that responsibility. The septic company is going to want to make sure to have something on the ground when they leave that all their hard work and their sandy loam that they're going to put in to cover those pipes, which are only about six inches underground, six to eight inches underground, they want to leave there knowing that there is seed in the ground that is going to hold that ground in place. Many times septic fields won't be terribly flat, so they're, they're gonna be concerned about that. You can get it in writing if you want to do that, that you will be responsible for seeding your own plot. I did not do that, and it was a grave mistake. The septic team that came in put in Bermuda grass, and I've been battling that Bermuda grass for 10 years. So don't make that mistake, and I would encourage you to think about what you want to do with the space. The general rules are you don't want to plant any hardwoody trees or long root plants. You want small herbaceous plants or annuals, and you want to get them in the ground um, very lightly. Seed choices of annuals are a great option and you can do small herbaceous plants as well. And your soil is gonna be sandy loam, so any plant choices that you make, you wanna make sure that they're good for that type of soil. And then you'll just buy packs and packs of seed and you can just lightly sprinkle them in the ground as I'm doing here. That seed sprinkle is, you wanna have the ground just light enough, so depending on the side of the seed, that it sits tightly in the ground. You don't have to cover it too much. You can cover it with a little bit of the sandy loam to hold it in place. The other thing to make sure to do is don't do it on a big, rain event coming up like that weekend. You want to do it on a light rain or you would want to water it in yourself. You can do this any time of year and it's fairly simple. So use this time to make a great new space and enjoy your new wildflower garden.